I am Pastor David Becker, pastor of St. John's Lutheran Church of Aiken. Thank you for tuning in today. Thanks also to KKIN Radio for broadcasting the service. It's also available online at stjohnaitkin.org. The present time we're holding in-person services at 9 a.m. on Sunday mornings. On this, the fifth Sunday after the Epiphany, we make our beginning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. I said and will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. We now confess our sins. O oh, Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended you and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them, and I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this your confession, I by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto you, and in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. I will sing to the Lord because he has dealt bountifully with me. Consider and answer me, O Lord my God. Light up my eyes lest I sleep the sleep of death. Lest my enemies say, I have prevailed over him. Lest my foes rejoice because I am shaken. But I have trusted in your steadfast love. My heart shall rejoice in your salvation. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I will sing to the Lord, because he has dealt bountifully with me. Let us pray. O Lord, keep your family, the church, continually in the true faith, that, relying on the hope of your heavenly grace, we may ever be defended by your mighty power. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Old Testament reading comes from the book of Isaiah, chapter 40, verses 21 to 31. Do you not know? Do you not hear? Has it not been told you from the beginning? Have you not understood? from the foundations of the earth. It is he who sits above the circle of the earth and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers, who stretches out the heavens like a curtain and spreads them like a tent to dwell in, who brings princes to nothing and makes the rulers of the earth as emptiness. Scarcely are they planted, scarcely sown, scarcely has their stem taken root in the earth. When he blows on them and they wither, and the tempest carries them off like stubble. To whom then will you compare me, that I should be like him, says the Holy One? Lift up your eyes on high and see, who created these? He who brings out their host by number, calling them all by name, by the greatness of his might, and because he is strong in power, not one is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel? My way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is disregarded by my God. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. <coughs> His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint, and to him who has no might, he increases strength. Even youth shall faint and be weary, and young men shall fall exhausted. But they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
Our epistle lesson comes from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians chapter 9, and I'll begin at the 16th verse. If I preach the gospel that gives me no ground for boasting, for the necessity is laid upon me, woe to me if I do not preach the gospel. For if I do this of my own will, I have a reward, but not of my own will, I am still entrusted with the stewardship. What then is my reward? That in my preaching I may present the gospel free of charge, so as not to make full use of my right in the gospel. For though I am free from all, I have made myself a servant of all, that I might win more of them. To the Jews I became as a Jew, in order to win Jews. To those under the law I became as one under the law, though not being myself under the law, that I might win those under the law. To those outside the law, I became as one outside the law, not being outside the law of God, but under the law of Christ, that I might win those, outs those outside the law. To the weak, I became weak, that I might win the weak. I become all things to all people, that by all means I might save some. I do it all for the sake of the gospel, that I may share with them in its blessings. Do you not know that in a race all the runners compete, but only one receives the prize? So run that you may obtain it. Every athlete exercises self-control in all things. They do it to receive the perishable wreath, but we an imperishable. So I do not run aimlessly. I do not box as one beating the air, but I discipline my body and keep it under control, lest after preaching to others, I myself should be disqualified. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our gospel lesson comes from the Gospel of St. Mark, chapter 1, and I'll begin the 29th verse. Immediately, Jesus left the synagogue and entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now, Simon's mother-in-law lay ill with a fever, and immediately they told him about her. And he came and took her by the hand and lifted her up, and the fever left her and she began to serve them. That evening at sundown, they brought to him all who were sick or oppressed by demons, and the whole city was gathered together at the door. And he healed many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons. And he would not permit the demons to speak because they knew him. And rising very early in the morning, while it was still dark, he departed and went to a desolate place, and there he prayed. And Simon and those who were with him searched for him, and they found him and said to him, Everyone is looking for you. And he said to them, Let us go to the next towns, that I may preach there also. That is why I came out. And he went throughout all Galilee, preaching in their synagogues and casting out demons. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. The children's lesson for today, I want to talk about something we did a few years back during COVID, uh, and that is pay attention to what the temperature of our body was. If we had a fever, that was not good. And in fact, uh, um, you know, there was a time when I took my, my temperature every morning and wrote that temperature down so that I would make sure that I didn't have COVID and that I wouldn't be giving that to someone that I was ministering to. Yes, when we have a fever, doesn't necessarily mean we have COVID, but that means that there's something going on in our body and it might be something we need to take some medicine for or maybe even go to the doctor for. Well, in the lesson I just read from Mark chapter one, we hear about a woman who had a fever. She was in bed. And um, Simon Peter, his, or her son-in-law, invited Jesus to his home, and uh, um, Jesus went, and what did he do? He healed her. He took her by the hand and helped her up, and the fever left. And then she went on to serve uh, those who were there. Jesus didn't use a doctor or medicine to heal. He used his power to heal. Um, Today, Jesus still heals. He gives us parents and doctors and nurses and medicine to help us heal. The Bible tells us he healed many people, but the most important thing he did was he healed us all of a disease called sin. 
as he went to the cross and died there for our sin and on the third day rose again. Uh, since he did that, we know that he has power to help us when we are sick and hurting. We also know that he can forgive our sins and help us to serve him by helping others. Amen. We now confess the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Once again, I'm Pastor David Becker of St. John's Lutheran Church of Aiken. Thank you for tuning in today. Our text for our meditation is our gospel lesson, Mark chapter 1, verses 29 to 39, of which uh, I just want to read uh, the following. And the whole city was gathered together at the door, and he healed many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons, and he would not permit the demons to speak because they knew him. Here ends the reading of our text. Did you hear what that said? Jesus healed many. Wouldn't it be great to have been living back then with Jesus? That was some kind of health care those people had. You got a bad back? Go see Jesus. You got bronchitis or allergies? Go see Jesus. Cancer, heart disease? No problem. Jesus can heal you. We hear how healing in Jesus' ministry was very important, and he did it often. So the question we might ask is, what about us? Every one of us in this, well, every one of us probably knows someone who's sick, someone who's battling cancer or heart disease or just the ravages of old age. What about us? Did Jesus just close up shop and stop all the healing? Well, I want to tell you, today is that Jesus still comes with healing. Our gospel reading for today continues on from last week's gospel lesson where on the Sabbath day after he had taught in the synagogue and healed a man with an unclean spirit, Jesus went to the house of Simon and Andrew where Simon's mother-in-law who had a, had a fever. Jesus goes to her, took her by the hand, lifted her up and the fever left her and she began to serve them. <laughs> this is the same type of thing that Jesus does to us. God descends with the heavenly power and brings healing. He takes his people by the hand, lifts them up to be of service to our neighbor and to him. Sometimes he uses doctors and nurses and the wonders of medical science to bring physical healing to those in the world. Yet, the thing we have to remember is that Jesus brings healing today that is much more complete than anything medical science can provide. It is a healing which is much more permanent, much more restorative. Jesus comes today with his healing, for as he says in Mark chapter 2, verse 17, those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. I came not to call the righteous, but sinners. As sinners, we are in need of healing. The very purpose of the church is to bring God's healing to the world, to overcome the separation between God and humanity, which is caused by our sin and leads to death. This is achieved for us when Christ comes to us with healing, when he became, becomes one with him, when we become one with him and with one another in the body of Christ, the church. Everything that we do as the church, all of our sacramental and liturgical life, all our teaching is directed at restoring the proper relationship between God and creation, which has been corrupted through our sinfulness. Isaiah 53, 5 says, 
but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace, and with his stripes we are healed. In baptism, Jesus leads us to abandon our own life in which we are under the sway of sin and death, and enter into a new life where sin and death have been defeated. In baptism, we enter into a new relationship with God in which sin and sickness and death no longer dominate. We become children of God, heirs of the kingdom, members of the Christ body, the church. This new relationship is to endure forever, and neither sickness nor death can destroy this relationship. Baptism, therefore, is the sacrament of healing, a healing aimed at the whole person, body, soul, and spirit, in which our sins are forgiven and the life of Christ bestowed. The sickness and death that once ruled our lives are defeated by Christ and the eternal kingdom of God is now open to us. The brokenness of our human existence is abolished as we are incorporated into the church, the body of Christ, through which we are saved. We are no longer left to live out our lives alone, to suffer and die a meaningless death. Rather, in the church, our suffering and death becomes a means to victory. Following in the footsteps of Christ, his death on the cross and his resurrection, through baptism, we are healed. And we are charged to bring this healing ministry to the world around us, to our family, to our neighbors, to all whom, with whom, all whom we come in contact with. While baptism is the means by which we become members of the church, that is, the body of Christ, the sacrament of the altar is the means by which this membership is realized and continues to be lived out. We are brought from the font to the altar. We are the church, and we gather together to celebrate the mystery of Christ's incarnation, death, and resurrection on our behalf. In the sacrament, we not only remember these events, but we become partakers of Christ's body and blood, receiving his grace for the healing of soul and body. Our sickness and our sin drives us to the medicine of eternal life. This isn't just a pill, take a pill and call me in the morning kind of issue. While we still live in this sinful and fallen world, we need this medicine on a regular basis. As a result of this healing that we have, how can we not be like Peter's mother-in-law who simply got up and began to serve? To serve the Lord and to serve one another. Peter's mother-in-law served not because she had to, but because of that's who she was. She has been healed, lifted up by Christ, and she had an opportunity to serve. The question we should ask ourselves is this, how do I serve? By being a good husband or a good wife? By being a good neighbor? By telling Jesus about others who are sick and suffering so that through that they too might receive the same medicine, the same healing as we have? Those are all ways that we can serve. As the body of Christ, we are to do what Christ does. We are to take the hands of those sick in this world, sick with fevers, or simply sick with sin, and bring them the mercy of Christ and the healing that he gives as he gives the forgiveness of sins through faith in Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, dear Father, for sending your Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh to preach the gospel and cast out the works of Satan and the corruption of sin, which we could not overcome. By your word, rescue us from every evil of body and soul. Lord of the church, give joy to your servants on whom you have laid the necessity to preach the gospel, that many would be saved in every nation, and that together we might share in the blessings of Christ. Heavenly Father, give to all Christian homes the endurance that comes from your Holy Spirit, that husbands and wives, parents and children may be disciplined and self-controlled in their duties, run their course in this life and continue to the end in the holy Christian faith, ready to receive the imperishable wreath of eternal life. Almighty God, creator of the world and its foundations, you hold sway over the powers of nature and the rulers of the earth, graciously preserve our land, its produce and industry, and our leaders together with our people do not disregard us for our sin but renew us 
that our lives may be peaceful and that our country may be governed according to your will. O Lord, your Son is the great physician of body and soul, at whose hand demon, disease, and every ill must turn away. We bring before you those in any need, especially those that we now name in our hearts. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Once again, I'm Pastor David Becker of St. John's Lutheran Church of Aiken. Thank you for tuning in today. I pray that you'll have a blessed week.